Hey, this is Brian with King Grizzly. Today we're going to look at absolute positioning in Elementor. Uh, we're going to look at some of the basics. We're going to look at how to deal with a common issue, which is how do we precisely center absolutely position content. And then as a bonus, uh, just a real quick look at a fun way to use absolute positioning to add a little extra flair to our websites. So let's check it out. <music> Okay, let's take a look at absolute positioning in Elementor. Uh, first thing is just the basics of how it works. So I've set a section up on this page that's 100% high. This will soon be called a container. And I dropped a few things in, a heading, some text, and an image. We are going to take a look at positioning this image. And I've also put sort of this, this axis in the background so we can see how it's working. So if I click on the image and go to advance, I went ahead and set a width on my image. Um, but what we want to get to is position. And you'll see when I change this to absolute, the image is no longer in that sort of linear block flow. It actually goes up to the top left of the containing object, which is this, this column. And uh, it's really not respecting sort of the, the linear flow of content here, which is actually what I, I want. Um, so we're going to look at moving this paw around using absolute positioning. So you'll notice that we're left and we're top and we're set to zero pixels. So if I were to change that to right and bottom, you'll see that the paw moves around. I'm gonna throw these pieces of text out because we don't need them for this demonstration. So how would we center the paw? If I click on it, whoops, I accidentally moved it manually. Uh, you can drag things with absolute positioning, but I have found just through trial and error, it's better to type in values here. So let's say we wanted to center this. How would we do it? My first instinct initially was, oh, I'll click on percentage and I'll change it to 50% from the left. Whoops, not 560, 50. But I'm realizing, actually I said it, that's from the right. So if I go back to the left and change it to 50%, you'll see, okay, yes, I'm 50% over, but that's the left side. It's the beginning of my image. So it's not really centered. And the same thing would be true if I clicked on top 50%, you'll see, I'm getting the top edge of my content, but I'm not centered. And, and trying to adjust the, the percentage so that it, it centers, that's not gonna work because when somebody resizes their screen, then the percentage will change where the graphic is placed and it won't be centered. So we need a way to center it. The, so this is, a, this is a confusion people have because when we first turn on absolute positioning, it's set to pixel and it's set to zero, right? So here's the trick. Uh, I need to turn those off, delete those zeros, but that still doesn't fix it. We also need to click on the parent container, like this, um, this column here in this instance. And I need to set the horizontal alignment to center and the vertical alignment to middle, and that will do it. So if I click back on the image, you can see if I add the zero back in, it makes sense. It's going to zero, zero for top and left, but I don't want that. I want it to be centered. So that's a common confusion with placing absolutely position Content. So I think we've we've covered the basics here, right? I I can move it around, and we can we have different values we can use, like uh, viewport height, viewport width. Um, what that means is, if I said right viewport width, and I set it to 100, I think it's viewport. It's actually off the screen because of the same issue. Uh, you can see I'm I'm 100% from right. If I did left and used a you know 99, we'll see that. If I start to scrub it in, it's it's over there. Um, so I tend to like to use pixels. Uh, so let's get into uh, I had mentioned just how do we how do we use absolute positioning to add a little extra something um, to our pages. What I like to do oftentimes with absolute positioning, there are practical uses. Like say for example, I wanted to put a play button over some content, um, but sometimes we just want almost like a graphic addition that's really nice so what i'll do sometimes is i'll i'll turn on some motion effects and so i'll have like a scrolling effect where i could do a ver on vertical scroll i want it to move so as we're moving the act the pause actually going up and down um, or i could uh, even have more than one type of animation so i could have a scale um, so as we're as we're scrolling the page, the element is getting bigger or smaller. So on some sites, what 
what works quite well is to have some graphic elements that are probably smaller. So, you know, I don't, let's get 100 pixels or something. And then maybe <clears throat> I would, I would put this near the, the edge of a page. Um, I might even, you know, have it kind of over here, just sort of as like an element. So if my content's over here, as somebody's scrolling the page, well, I need to move it down a bit. It takes a little, a little trial and error, but page loads up. And then as people are scrolling, you know, you can have a little movement. And this can be adapted to tablet and mobile. So if I were to go to tablet, I can adjust these values on tablet as I see fit. Um, so we can really get it to work across all devices. Um, on mobile, I'd need to make this section 100% high. Um, so those are some basics around um, absolute positioning. Hopefully you found something useful there. If you did find something useful, please consider subscribing and we will keep rolling out elementary videos. Thanks.